Okay, so we zoom out there, we can see a couple of things. So it's the grid line we changed, the you know, grid manager is there with the 1A in the bubble and the extra grid line we added. Plus, in addition to that, we also have the additional building that we created too. So let's have a look at some of the features that we have inside the drawing model in order to edit our grids. So within our view attributes or our reference presentation, we have the ability to turn on different aspects of the grid. So for example, we can either choose to show the grid lines or not, or we can select the different buildings that we want to show as well. You'll also see their floor lines. And floor lines will become lit when we're in a section view, when we're cutting through this. So we can show those RL or RLs or those elevational heights as well. So let's have a look at how this may work. So if we go to our reference presentation setting up here in the top, and we'll say presentation. And we'll have our view attributes dialog box. Here we can choose to show the grid lines or not, as the case may be. And by selecting that, the grid lines subsequently turn off. So we have a, a number of settings that we can adjust in the drawing models as well to have a look at the look and feel of what our, our grid system and grid annotation actually look like. They're stored in two different locations. One location is in the settings dialog box from the grid systems dialog. And in here, we're governing the locations and the display of the, the grid bubbles themselves, whether we want dimensions, etc., etc. We have further settings via the element template dialog box. And if we go and open this file, the grid template, which is located on our systems, we have further settings there as well. It's also worth noting in here, we have something called a grid label mask. And the mask is a circle underneath the grid bubble which masks it. any drawing work or other attributes in our drawing that are underneath. So the grid bubble is never obscured by those objects. So let's have a look at where we can find this. So going back to our set reference presentation, let's turn the, the grid on. Grid lines. So we can open up the grid manager from within our drawing model. And from within here, we can take a look at the settings. So we can use these settings to change certain aspects, and we can apply that to all grid systems. So for example, we can choose to turn the labels along the bottom on. You'll also notice we have the grid template up here, and from within here, we can select Manage Templates. Now, what you'll have to do is go to the grid template file to see the settings. And the grid template file is a file located within our system. So let's say apply to this, and say OK. And those grid systems then turn on for the bottom. The grid system template located by the DGN lib is located in your system's DGN lib folder. And to locate that path you can type in configuration variables and you can type in grid. And you can see here where your grid system is parsed via the variable bb grid template DGN. And again in there, there's more settings that you can interact with. So let's go and look at that file. Within the grid template DGN live file, we can go to the modeling area as an example, and the home tab, and we can look at element templates. So from within here, we have the grid template, and we can hit manage. And once we hit manage on this, we can choose the default and look at other settings that we can adjust. And for example, we have the element mask. 
and its coverage around the bubbles is set at 110%, which gives us a little bit of extra coverage around the line work. There's also settings for the label text sizing, elevation lines, and their level and color. The cell we want to use for L elevational markers. And down here, various grid settings, bubble sizes, bubble text sizes, grid leaders, and grid line colors and styles and weights. So this could be adjusted per project or over the whole workspace itself. Let's head back to our plan model. You'll also find up here in the ribbon bar when back in the drawing model, the ability to refresh or rebuild the grid. So let's have a look at what that means. So annotations and grids can be refreshed or rebuilt, and that is required when a change is made, but an automatic update hasn't occurred. And that might be something to do with when you're using the manual cached uh, presence. So like a reload and a sync, a refresh and a rebuild conducts two slightly different processes. The refresh processes the grids and elevations and looks for any changes and makes those changes accordingly. The rebuild deletes the entire grid and recreates the grid for both dynamic and cache. So if you accidentally delete a grid line and you want it rebuilt, you know, that you can, it's fair to use the rebuild, but more often than not, you just want to use refresh. You'll also notice down here, you can change the scale of the grid bubbles. They are dependent on the scale of the drawing model itself. So let's have a look at how we may change those. So we have our, looking at this bubble here, if we go to our, our models up here, and we take a look at the properties of those models. You can see here we have an annotation scale of 1 to 50. So if we change that to 1 to 100, you can see the dimensions of the grid, the bubble size, and any text in the drawing double in size. This is how we can alter the different scales for things. Another thing to point out is how the bubbles move in and out depending on the clip of our drawing itself. Let's go and have a look at our detail plan. You'll notice the detail plan has the automatic grid set right at the edges of our, of our clip for our detail plan here. So one of the unique features of the grid there is it looks at the clipping boundary of the plan itself and then creates an offset a way to place the dimensions and also the bubble heads and those settings can be governed again within our, our grid system settings under settings and then we have our offset settings here so if you wanted it slightly closer we put five in there we can hit apply and then we can hit OK and watch those dimension lines shift in towards the plan itself so we can set those settings through the settings there and, and make changes to grid systems uh, like so in various locations and per, per drawing or per the whole project the final bit of our grid systems is having a look at what we can do with each individual grid line and the bubble head itself and hiding and showing and, and moving them around to suit on a grid by grid basis. So you notice when you select the grid line, we're, we're given various little widgets that we can move. We can turn the bubble on and off, create dog legs, extend or reduce the line length. But also we have the ability to right click or hold right click down over grid lines and, and perform um, some functions there as well. So let's take a look at how that works. So and let's have a look at this grid line up, A up here. So, you know, the first thing we can look at is extending or reducing each individual bubble head. You know, if you want to move it clear of some text or, or so forth. We can use the center one to create a dog leg. 
and then use each individual widget to move that around. There is a delete button on the dog leg as well, which will allow you to delete any dog leg. And then this button down here leaves, it allows you to extend the, the line up again. You'll notice that we have a little tick box here. And that tick box, by selecting it and clicking on the screen, allows you to remove the bubble head altogether. And clicking on it again and turn the head around. We also have the features such as holding the right click down and saying hide grid line. So the whole grid line could be hidden. We want to turn that back on. We hover over another uh, grid line and say show hidden grid lines. So there's some ways we can operate with grid bubbles on an individual basis. And that's the session on grids. And so some very useful features there that allow you to have grids on your project set up once and seen all over your project. And you can edit various things to suit. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.